If you want to buy cheap FIFA 20 Ultimate Team coins, go and check out MMOPO.com and use the discount code EGHD for 8% off your order. Yes guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we are covering my best formations and my best custom tactics to use in Weekend League, to use in Rivals, complete objectives or even squad battles as well. You can use this obviously in any game modes. But the whole idea of this formation is to be as competitive as possible and to win you as many games as possible as easily as possible. Now obviously when I do squad builders, I usually do show the custom tactics and the formations that I use in those squad builders, but I feel like I use a lot of the same custom tactics and formations for a lot of the squads, and this is the one I actually use. Now this is some random team that I have on my account. These are all untradeable players, which is why we've got uh, Walcott, Martial, and Anderson up front. So don't take any notice of this team. It's not a very competitive team whatsoever. Obviously we have untradeable uh, Guardiola, Paulinho, Cruyff, uh, Rio Ferdinand, Carlos, and Tellez and stuff like that. Still. A Pretty good midfield and defence, but the attack is a little bit wrong. But anyway, when you build a team, obviously you can use any formation that you want, and then you go into the custom tactics in a game, and you switch it to defensive, ultra defensive, uh, attacking, or ultra attacking. So what I do when I start a game, I go straight into 4-2-3-1. It's my favourite formation. It's the most balanced one defensively, and it allows me to gauge what my opponent is doing and whether I need to change my formation from there. So I am still someone that uses drop back. I don't abuse the meta of like drop back one defense, but I have been so used to the defensive style of drop back that uh, when I play on balance, I feel like my players are too aggressive, even though they're not that aggressive. I'm just so used to the way that they drop back in a 4-2-3-1. And because I'm quite active with my player selection, I feel like the drop back um, defensive style suits me and I know what my player's AI is doing with this. So if any of you guys have used 4-2-3-1 and used balanced, maybe just use balanced yourself. But what I use drop back with five width and also for depth. Um, again, you can change the depth with a 4 2 3 1. Anything from um, literally 3, 4, or 5 is pretty good. Anything less than 3, and you're basically parking the bus. Anything more than 5, and you're basically pushing your CDMs up a little bit too much. And I feel like it's just too high, especially for a normal formation that you're not trying to like score a goal from like deliberately. You're not losing the game. Now, when it comes to the offensive style, I used a balanced offensive style. And the reason why is if I want a player to make a run, I press LB. If I want them to come towards me, I press RB. I like to have the most control over my players as possible but at the same time if a player sees a good run they still go for that run whereas if you use any of the other stuff like long ball fast build up possession it kind of starts to play around too much with what a player wants to do naturally and when it comes to the width i use five and uh, when i go for players in the box i use four i think four or three is pretty good especially as this is like your go-to formation if you're playing in foot champs you don't want to concede because you know you've got too many men forward um, it's good to just go into a slightly more defensive formation to start off with and then once you've got used to the routine and patterns of your opponent then you can open up and use different formations but yeah anything between four and three is pretty good i like to use four and i find that um, if i'm running down the wing with a lamb or a ram then um, the other side of the pitch there's usually an attacking run there for an rba or like some kind of low driven cross corners i leave on two and free kicks i leave on two i tend to find that i don't really score from free kicks unless it's like literally a direct free kick and even when i do take free kicks i like to pass the ball off and then just run onto it rather than actually cross the ball in with a free kick and the same goes for corners i don't really cross the corner in now of course with 4 2 3 1 you're gonna have two cdms um, what i recommend is having one player that has like more of a defensive mindset and the reason why is because what you're going to do is, if you're losing a game, you want to change your formation to something more attacking. Something like a 4-4-2 or 4-3-1-2. So at that point, you're going to want still a player that can defend, but at the same time, they can still get forward. So Guardiola is someone I don't really want to get forward. He's literally not the greatest of dribblers. He's a good passer, good defender, got some half-decent pace, but that's it. He's just a defensive player. Whereas Paulette, Paulinho, on the other hand is a little bit more of an all-rounder. That's the best way to build a squad for this kind of formation with the um, intention to change it if you are losing. Now, when it comes to the custom instructions, guys, um, for the striker, I I've messed around with just leaving everything on normal, and I've also played with the get-in behind and also come back on defense. Now, I feel like this is already a very defensive formation. If you come back on defense from the start, you're going to be using basically like a turtle formation. Like, you are parking the bus, 
and it's not fun to play against and it's not really fun to play with. I find that just leaving him unbalanced defensively and getting behind is the best way to leave your striker. And then what I like to do for literally the lamb, the cam and the ram is just change it to get into the box for the cross. Again, what you could do is use come back on defense on the lamb and the ram or what you can even do is just leave them unbalanced and then use the cam to come back on defense. Now, this is something that you need to think about when it comes to the player you're using. If your player has low stamina, then get them to come back on defense and then get them to attack is going to affect their stamina quite bad. So what I like to do, I just use basic defense. Now, of course, for your CDMs, you're going to want at least stay back whilst attacking and cover center on. Again, something what people do is they use cut passing lanes. Personally, I like to use balanced defense. I feel like cut passing lanes, it makes your... Uh, defenders more predictable the way that they try to um, you know the way that AI moves for you so I like to leave both of mine on balanced and stay back whilst attacking with cover center and then left backs and the right backs also on stay back whilst attacking so as I said this is the formation that I use when I start the game I go into defensive and I basically just play and see what my opponent is doing if they're attacking me if I'm getting opportunities to attack um, if I feel like I am, you know, if I'm losing or I feel like I'm not really getting many opportunities and if I'm basically just struggling in my attacking third, what I'll do is I'll change the formation to a 4-4-2. Now, of course, what this does is it means that usually you move your cam to striker. So now you have two strikers. Your, mid, your CDMs now move up to a midfield role, so they're slightly more further up the pitch. And also your lamb and ram is going to find a little bit more space um, on the wings. So it's slightly different, but it's not too different. So if you've not used this formation, I recommend trying it, seeing if it suits you. But the tactics we have for this is as follows. So I use pressure on heavy touch. And the reason why this is usually a formation that I go to when I'm struggling or I'm finding difficulty breaking down my opponent. But at the same time, it's not something that I'm going to because I need to score a goal in the last five minutes. We have a different custom tactic for that. What I use on width and depth is five and five. I feel like anything more and you're getting too attacking too early on in the game. Offensive style is also going to be left on balance, just like 4-2-3-1. Now, something that's weird and different, the fact that I use this formation to actually create more space in the attacking third, basically, I actually use players in the box as free. Now, don't be fooled by this imagery that we have here. Seeing an example of like, you know, more players moving up, the more you put this up. This doesn't always necessarily mean, especially with different formations, like a 4 2 3 one with three in the box is different to a 4 4 2 with three in the box. I feel like this is an option where if you have it really high, you're basically opening yourself up for a counter attack, especially in a 4 4 2 where you don't have a CDM or you might have used, you know, you might have held LB as you've made a pass with a midfielder and they're pushing up out the, out, you know, up the pitch and then you lose the ball. If you have too many players in the box, then you're going to be left so, so open. So I recommend using this with free. So for the custom tactics here, I've gone for getting behind on both my strikers and also come back on defense. Come back on defense is a little bit to help the defense, but at the same time, it's more to do with positioning. When I do win possession back, I like them not to be you know, on the offside mark. I don't want them to be literally both of them running behind the defensive line straight away. I like to build up some play first, get it a little bit closer to the goal before I play that free ball. Now, for my left mids and my right mids, I have the same as what I did on the 4 2 one with the Lambs and Rams. I have get into the box for cross. Um, I've seen some people use get in behind. I mean, that... that does work okay, but I, I just like to use everything on balance and then just get into the box for, box for cross on both of these players. Again, it's going to leave you a lot of uh, play when it comes to using LB and RB to command runs, you know, come to me, go forward, etc. Now, for the midfielders, what we have here is actually slightly different. So we have stay back cross attacking and cover center on my more defensive midfielder. And then what I have on my midfielder, which can get forward, um, is actually balanced attack and cover center. So that basically means that when they see the opportunity to get forward, they will. But at the same time, they're not just gonna run up the pitch for absolutely no reason. I feel like this is going to help you out massively, especially if you've got a big midfielder in your squad. Obviously, if you have a Rudhullet, he will score so many goals for you because he's such a great attacker. But at the same time, as soon as you lose possession, he will get back for you. But obviously, not everybody can afford a Rudhullet. But if you can find someone that plays a similar role, so for example, a very cheap alternative. Right at the start of the game, we had flashback Paulinho. Great attacking stats as well, high, high work rates. Very strong, good finishing, good defensive stats, good dribbling. Obviously, not as good as Rudhullet, but there are plenty of players in this game that can do this kind of thing. 
Now again for my left backs and my right backs I have stay back whilst attacking and that is my formation that I go to once I've figured out what my opponent is like, once I've figured out how they attack, what their patterns are, are they someone that builds up the play fast, are they more of a possession player, do I need to put more pressure on in the midfield with this pressure on heavy touch. Now here is the formation that I go to when I'm losing and I need a goal, this could be because I've conceded in the last few minutes of the game, it could be I have like 10, 20, 30 minutes left of the game and I decide you know what, let's apply some pressure here. Now again we use pressure on heavy touch, I don't use constant pressure, I don't use press off the possession loss, I feel like those are too committed. Um, once you do lose possession, they can uh, drag you out of position too much, whereas pressure on heavy touch is basically your AI detects when the other person has limited options to pass to, and then it starts to um, basically mark up all of their passing opportunities, and this is when you win the ball back and can counter them pretty quickly. Now, again, we've gone for five width, but this time I've gone for six depth. Now, you're probably thinking, if this is your ultra-attacking custom tactics, why have you only got six depth? Guys, you don't need to put it up to eight. The amount of times that I literally have five minutes in a game, I switch it to four, three, one, two like this. And because it's quite a narrow formation, and of course I put team press on as well using the D-pad, this puts so much pressure on the opponent just having this set up that I will get at least one or two opportunities at the end of the game to try to score. Of course, guys, this is why I also have the drop back 4-2-3-1 custom tactics, which I played the most, most of the game in because by the 60th, 70th, 80th minute, I've still got a lot of my stamina left. So it makes this custom tactic more effective by the time I go into it. If I've got 70, 80% of my fitness left, and my opponent's only got 40 to 50% on a lot of their players, then they're more likely to make mistakes. You know, the, the composure stat is affected. Now, the offensive style is also going to be balanced. Uh, again, some people might want to use fast build-up because, you know, it's the last opportunity of the game. I feel like your, your players are more likely to, like, miss dribble or miss pass and you know especially with the animation where if you make a pass behind someone you kind of get these ice this ice skating feature um, I find that yeah fast build up is just a little bit too much I like to just keep it on balance and again I have three players in the box you'd think that I you know the best thing to do would just be pumping this up and having more players in the box I find that if I need to score a goal then my opponent most likely has their most defensive formation now if I put this many players in the box with that many players in the box from his team there's going to be literally like 20 players in his box if I have too many. So I don't want to overcrowd my opponent's box. But what I do for corners is I put it up to three because at the end of the day, um, if I do have five minutes left of the game, I like to go short and then pass the ball into the box. The more people that are around, the more luck that happens, especially towards the end of the game when players are tired, um, defenders make mistakes and by having more people around, if there is a lucky spill, then I can kind of uh, grab the ball and just score a quick, easy goal. Now for the formation, obviously the most defensive midfielder will go into the CDM position, so that would be Guardiola in this situation. I usually put the other CDM that has the more attacking traits in the right centre mid position. It doesn't matter whether you put them left centre mid or right centre mid. And then usually out of your cams, someone usually has like 50 or 60 defending. So try to put the cam that has the best defending stats into the midfield area. And of course, when it comes to the cam position, I recommend someone that has good passing stats. This is not a good example because this team isn't very good. It's not the team I use. And then usually what you do is you have your cam from the 4-2-3-1 and the striker in the two striker positions. Now, the first thing you want to know about this custom tactic is we have join the attack on the left back and also the right back. So basically when you get the ball, you can see that the uh, right back and the left back has a lot of space to work into because this is, a, this is quite a narrow formation. It's going to give you so much more of a threat. The amount of times uh, the left back or right back are literally just used as bait because they are getting into such great positions. I fake that I'm going to make a pass into them, but now I have two strikers and a cam. There's a lot to also go down the middle of the pitch. Now, of course, this is going to leave you to counter-attacks because you're only going to have your two centre-backs and also your CDM as your defenders. But let's get into the custom tactics starting from the top now. Um, we have the two strikers again getting behind. This time, stay forward as well. There is literally no point in them coming back in a defence at all. I want them to stay forward and get ready to receive a pass in and just score a very quick, cheap goal if possible. Also, for the cam, we have stay forward and get into the box for the cross. 
Now for my CDM, what I like to do is stay back whilst attacking and cover centre. Uh, but what some people do is drop between defenders. So obviously with our left back and right back joining the attack, that would mean that our defenders basically move into a three to back formation with your CDM now being one of your centre backs until um, your team regains your shape again. But I don't know, I don't really like that. I like the fact that um, the CDM is slightly more in front of the centre backs and it, it gives more of like a threat I can I can commit to a tackle more with Guardiola whereas if he is a centre back then you're inviting a little bit more pressure that's that's how I feel about it now the other CDM from the 4-2-3-1 formation is going to be on balance attack and cover centre as well as the other midfielder which is probably a lamb or a ram is going to be on balance attack and cover centre but yeah just try to make sure you pick a, a player that has either good defending stats for an attacker like 50 or 60 defending or they are quite a strong physical player with good pace and good strength now something to talk about with the old ultra attacking formation in the 4-3-1-2 you're gonna want to also use team press if you've only got five minutes left of the game you need to go and score a goal you need to use team press because if they start passing around the back you're not going to be able to get the ball back in time so make sure you use team press you need to do that by using the d-pad and then finally guys this is actually a formation which i use if i'm winning the game and i've got five minutes left and i know that my opponent has gone into the craziest ultra attacking formation I want to also hold out a win. So what I do, it's basically the same as the 4 2 3 one we've got set up, except I do go drop back one depth. This is never a formation that I recommend starting with. One, you would actually win less games. Two, you would enjoy the game a lot less because it's so, so boring. But as I said, just use it to hold out a win. Offensive style, again, use balance. You could use possession if you want, um, but the width is also going to stay on five. Players in the box is one. I don't want people to run up the pitch again to just you know run back. And in corners and free kicks, I also want one because I don't want to be counter-attacked from a corner situation. Usually, I'm just going to go short and then pass back to midfielder so I don't lose possession. Now the instructions that are different, um, we have the striker on mixed attack rather than get in behind. I also have come back on defence for the striker and all three of these cams. And then of course both my CDMs are stay back whilst attacking and cover centre. And then my left back and right back is cover centre. So yes, this is going to be a very defensive formation, but we don't play all game. I think that you know custom formations and tactics like this are absolutely fine to play as long as there's a reason. If you're winning the game, you've got barely any time left, It's uh, you've, you're in extra time or something, your players are low on stamina, it makes no sense to still be attacking your opponent if you're already winning and you just need to hold out a win. So this is perfect to kind of end the game on a win. So guys, this has been my custom tactics that I like to use for foot champions and rivals. It has been the best that I have used for obviously to get as many wins as possible. But also at the same time, it's the, the formations that I like to use and have fun with. Because at the end of the day, if you can use a formation that gets you one more win every weekend league, that's all good and that. But if you don't enjoy playing the games, then what's the point? Because that's literally 10 hours worth of gameplay. So something I really recommend you guys doing is getting used to using LB and RB. It means so much, especially in a formation like 4-2-3-1, which isn't as attacking as 4-4-2 or 4-3-1-2. It's good to be able to control your runs. Of course, guys, we're going to be doing squad builders in the future. You can check out the other videos we have on the channel with the gameplay. And also, you can even check out my Road to Glory. We have a separate Road to Glory channel now, so I'll leave the link to the Road to Glory channel in the description. It's my second channel for FIFA content. Literally every time I go into a game, Rivals, Foot Champions, whatever game mode, even squad battles, I use the formations that we've used and custom tactics that we've used here. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. If you have, if you have made it to this far into the video, you probably have enjoyed these custom tactics, so please drop a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe before you leave, turn on those notifications. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.